What would you do if you received an evacuation order on your phone right now? Today, we're gonna to walk you through what happens when a fire is detected, how you're notified, and what you need to do to get out safely. Welcome to Wildfire Watch. My name is Rich Shortall. This series is, fun, is produced by FireSafe Marin and is funded by the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority. I'd like to turn your attention now to a video of some residents who recently had to evacuate during a fire that we had called the Mount Lassen Fire in Lucas Valley. Fires seem inevitable. We can always do things to protect ourselves, even if what that means. So I received a Nixle alert. So I looked in and I saw that it was in uh, 22 Mount Lassen. Then I heard sirens coming up the street. My spouse noticed it first and we had our kids with us. We have two young sons. So I looked out the back window and the hill was ablaze. And we could see the flame is right behind the trees and the grass is behind here. And it looked like it was blowing in the other direction, but it was progressing fast. The wind was coming in the direction of the house. It would have gone up, you know, in a minute. We were wondering if we should get the hoses out and everything, but people from the county came and told us just to leave the house. And I immediately pulled my bag that I had pretty well ready for evacuation. So we grabbed our passports and birth certificates and some kids' pictures and uh, our first aid kit, and we left. Even though we had a go bag ready and we had our import papers in the garage and ready to go, there was no time to even get those and load those into the car. Uh, unfortunately, not everybody is prepared, and uh, we have had evacuation practices but not everybody participates. And I found that uh, many neighbors were um, really not sure exactly what to uh, pack up and take. So it took a number of them quite a long time to get ready. I'm still very confused about what you take. I mean, are you, are you uh, taking stuff so you can camp out and have all that? Are you taking stuff so you're gonna stay overnight in someone's house or at a hotel? And, and how much do you take? I mean, I, I have copies of all my documents in the bag. And I look at things, and I felt like taking my husband's picture with me. I mean, that's how, because that was kind of um, almost like a metaphor for everything else. But I just thought I have to let go of all the other stuff. The 911 response was amazing and really, really fast. Um, I can underline the word amazing enough. And then came the helicopters with the water drops, and then came the bigger planes with the fire retardant droppings. His helicopters and airplanes and firefighters and first responders took care of uh, the fire and amazingly we were back in our house that evening. I expected a fire to come here from Sonoma, from the north, over the hills. I didn't expect it to be practically in my backyard. We have pets and one of our cats was very easy to catch and one of them not easy to catch. Uh, and We had to leave one of them behind in hopes that they were going to be fine and I just needed a blanket in order to be able to catch the cat. It was that basic, but we just wanted to get out before anything happened to our son, so. And I was so happy that I had just recently had my gardeners cut down all the dry grass behind me and cut, there's a redwood tree someone planted behind my house way, way back, and I had them cut all those lower branches. We're prepared to go, because the fire reality in California is that you should be prepared and ready to go. Um, you love your home and you love your neighbors, but if you gotta go to protect yourself and your neighbors, then you guys all gotta go. Well, the good news is Lucas Valley Fire put up a lot of smoke and a little bit of flame, but it's a routine fire. It was quickly put out. That doesn't mean, though, that it wasn't a little bit scary, a little bit hectic, a little confusing, as we heard from the residents who live there. But after all, alerts went out, people were safely evacuated, the fire was put out quickly, mission accomplished. So let's find out a little bit more about how the operation of putting out the fire actually worked. We're lucky to have today the incident commander of the fire, Brett McTeague from the Marin County Fire Department with us today. Brett, welcome. Thanks for having me. All right. So you're the first one out there. What are the decisions that, that go through your mind when you first show up to a fire like that? Well, it's really life, property, and environment. And one of the first decisions that we're making is, are we going to evacuate? And one of our calls right off the bat is to the Marin Sheriff's Department and having a unified command and making a decision if we're gonna to need to evacuate the residents and then where our priority flanks are and if it's gonna affect the community. Great, so evacuation order went out, seemed to work very well, 
But one of the things that comes up frequently during evacuations is, what if you're somebody with mobility issues? Maybe you're in a wheelchair, maybe you don't have a car. What's your recommendations for those people to prepare for a potential evacuation? Well, really two things. One is making sure they're signed up for Alert Marin or any notification process that we have in place and making sure they're getting that advance notice. Yeah. Second is just being prepared, letting their neighbors know that they're going to have mobility issues, their friends, their family, and that way we can really pre-plan uh, an evacuation for them so we can get them out safely. That's really good advice. And I would add that for some of those folks, they might consider contacting the Marin Center for Independent Learning, Living, which will help them to prepare and come up with a plan. So let's take a look at some photos from the fire and see what was going on. Yeah. First one we have here has smoke of different colors. And people say, why is there white smoke and black smoke? What's happening? Well, it's really transitioning from different fuel types. The white smoke is in that light, flashy fuels, the grass, and it's transitioning into that oak that's there. So our, our chaparral, our chemise, things like that just have more oil in it, and it's going to produce that black smoke. I got you. We could see along the ridge line there that the firefighters are stationed there with their equipment. Why are they stationed in that area? So they're, they're following the, the, the flank of the fire, really, and they're working directly against the, the hot part of that fire. Um, and the, the hose lay is being advanced off the engine and goes all the way up to the hill. They're advancing the hose, and it's followed up with the hand crew and the bulldozers that are actually removing fuel behind it um, to basically create the perimeter control on that flank. So we really got multiple things going on, air attack, so to speak. We've got the firefighters on the scene. We've got bulldozers all of it working together in a coordinated fashion. Exactly. Great. Let's take a look at the next photo. So here's our classic one. Everybody loves the helicopters, but usually we see nice fresh water coming out. What's the black liquid coming out of that? Yeah, so the copter here pulled uh, its, its last bucket drop out of the lagoon at the Civic Center, and it's just uh, more stagnant water. So the water's a little bit darker, a little bit dirtier, and a little bit of surprise for the firefighters on the line. <laughs> still wet, so still doing a good job yeah, for us. Still though, effective, right? yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, let's see what's next. Oh, this is a classic one. Everybody's seen this. The plane comes in, it drops the red, which we all know is retardant. So um, what is in the retardant and how does it work? Well, it's a chemical compound and it, it basically um, does a couple things. One, it cools the fire down uh, and it also actually uh, helps reduce um, the uh, flammability of the actual uh, vegetation that's burning. So it buys us some time uh, for crews to get in there and follow it up with our hose lines and our handling construction. Yeah. I have a little bit of experience with this in the past. I think it's very sort of sticky and really grabs onto things. Yeah, it's like mud, really, and it just kind of coats everything that it touches, and it's really slimy, actually. It makes makes difficult to grab tools and stuff afterwards, real slippery. Yeah, I guess we don't want to get hit by it if we can avoid no, it. No, absolutely not. When those mm -hmm. tankers drop, it's a lot of weight coming down, so uh, we have to actually clear the line before they make their drops, and that's all being done by the coordinated air attack that's at scene. Oh, speaking of coordinated air attack, that's that smaller plane that we often see circling above the big tankers? Yeah, exactly. We have different layers that are occurring. The tankers are coming in low and dropping retardant. Air attacks up above the fire, and they're kind of getting the big picture of what um, is going on in the fire, and they're letting the incident commander know uh, where the priorities might be, and then they're keeping everyone safe when the drops are coming in. And, of course, we're all talking to each other on the same radios and whatnot. Exactly. Oh, great. All right. One more picture here. So we can see we're getting near the end of the fire. I think it's interesting on the right over there, we know this, that the trees are a little bit red and there's an unburned area. Looks like that's where the retardant dropped. Yeah, we call that an island. So the retardant dropped in there and they were able to actually, the retardant did its job and stopped the fire right there. And that's a patch of unburned fuel. So uh, we'll, we'll get in there and either follow it up with a hand line uh, or it might just be a standalone area that uh, it, the, the retardant did its effective job. Yeah, so we're near the end of the fire. And so what are the firefighters doing and how long are they going to be on scene here? You know, on a fire like this, we might be here for a couple days. It's really important that all the fire, uh, any hot spots are mopped up and taken care of. So on this fire, we're there for several days, cruise overnight, making sure that any hot spots put out within 100 feet of the line. And we're monitoring for several days just to make sure that the residents can sleep soundly. Well, can't thank you enough for really a great job done. And I think we should all rest assured that when we have a situation like this, Basically, the firefighters are gonna stay there, even if it takes days, to make sure that we've actually put everything out. Yeah, absolutely. All right, very good. Thanks, Brad, appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, so you can see the evacuation was successful, the alerts went out. Let's take a look at a short video that explains a program called Zone Haven, which is what's being used now to help coordinate evacuations. Engine 
Rich. Good hey, to Matt. see you. How's it going, man? Let me tell you what I got cooking on this. Okay. Uh, so the wind's really starting to pick up. I want to activate the uh, Zone Haven Emergency Management Evacuation System. Immediate evacuation order to this zone right here. This is mill dash E021. Okay, uh, I'll make the call to the County Emergency Operations Center and they'll notify all the residents in that zone. Perfect. Hey, we have a fast moving wildfire. Uh, we need to send out an evacuation order to all residents in zone mill E021 through Alert Marin. Okay, confirming you want evacuation order for Mill Valley E021. Okay, thanks. All right, so I'm sending officers into zone mill E021. Yeah. Um, they're gonna evacuate all the residents in that zone. I've also got officers going to major intersections to control Perfect. traffic, and I'm gonna be using Zone Haven to monitor that traffic in real time. Okay, I've checked the public emergency portal and all the information is updated with the evacuation order. Hey, honey? Yeah? There's an awful lot of smoke in the sky. Where? It looks like it's coming from the south. Have you heard anything? Do you yeah. know what's going on? No, but we could check uh, Marin County's uh, emergency website. They, let me, I got a bookmark, give me a second. Oh, look at they're evacuating these two areas. Oh my God. Doesn't Betty live near there? Yeah, she lives right up there. Did she send it for Alert Marin? I, I, I don't know. I've got to give her a call. She's got to get out of there now. All right, and we got to get our go bag and just be ready. Come on. Okay. Our evacuation plan works. All the agencies in Marin use the Zone Haven platform to quickly and safely get people out of harm's way. We use Alert Marin to notify everybody that an evacuation is underway. Law enforcement agencies work together to manage traffic so fire crews can get in and residents can get out. Zone Haven enables us to quickly evacuate residents and frees up our firefighters to control the fire. We are well prepared and trained to safely evacuate residents when necessary. But to help us keep you safe, we're asking you to do two things right now. Number one, subscribe to Alert Marin. Number two, know your zone. Check out emergency.marincounty.org the county's emergency web portal to familiarize yourself with your evacuation area. Now we're gonna hear from Mark Brown from the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority, who's gonna bring us up to date on all the latest happenings in wildfire in a segment we call Wildfire Beat. Hi, I'm Mark Brown, the Executive Officer with the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority. You've probably been watching the fires that have been burning throughout the state and here in Marin. You've also probably noticed there's been a little bit of a lull, but we are entering the most dangerous part of the fire season, and we ask that you don't drop your guard. So let's talk about the fall weather patterns that we get. We get low pressure systems that will come in, cool the temperatures down, maybe provide a little bit of rain, and make us feel like fire season might be over but behind every one of those low pressure systems is a high pressure system that comes in that creates offshore wind events that causes our red flag warnings, the most critical conditions. Now let's couple that with the fuel conditions that we have. The, the smaller fuels, they are as dry as we have ever seen them and they are what really carry our fires here in Marin. The brush on Mount Tam, critically low moisture values. So they are, the brush is ready to burn as well and our forests are so unhealthy, so unhealthy the scientists have never seen it this unhealthy here in Marin, and now our forests are primed to burn. As you've been walking around your house, you probably noticed your leaves are starting to fall. And what we like to say, where the leaves blow, the embers go. And during a fire under windy conditions, where the leaves have accumulated, that's exactly where the embers are gonna go, and that's what can ignite and destroy your home. So I ask that you do what I do. Clean those leaves up at least once a week. That's what I do at my house. You can also take some other very simple steps to improve the safety of your home. So what we're asking for you to do is not be that spark that starts a new fire. Just like the other day, we had the fires on White's Hill and Hawk Hill, started by really simple sparks. And they weren't even on extreme days. So that means we can't ever drop our guard right now. We have always got to be ready. 
Speaking of being ready, situational awareness. I would like you to be situationally aware. I would like you to know when we have critical weather conditions. I would like you to know what's going on around you. And if you haven't enrolled for Alert Marin, I ask you to do that now at alertmarin.org. I also ask that you learn what evacuation zone you're in. And you can do that by going to emergency.brincounty.org. Click on the evacuation tag and you can enter your address and find out what evacuation zone you're in. Thank you and please be safe. When you get an evacuation order, you grab your go bag and you go. My name is Mary Scramstad. I'm a wildfire mitigation specialist with San Rafael Fire. And I'm Quinn Gardner, the emergency manager for the city. We're here today to talk to you about our go bags and what you should have inside yours. But first, let's start with what's on the outside. You can see I have my gloves hanging in case I needed to use them, as well as a whistle, a flashlight, and my evacuation tag. Let's dive in. You'll be amazed at how much I can fit in this. That was fast. Yeah, and the majority of things here too are things that I already had in my home and I just needed to gather and put into a go bag. What about this one, Quinn? Yeah, that is a little unique. This is one of the few things I bought. This is actually a crank radio. So it's a flashlight, solar charger, um, and a radio that I can also charge things out of, which is really helpful. In addition, of course, I've got my power banks. I use these when I travel and then I just put them back into my go bag whenever I'm done. A few other items that I want to point out. I keep all my important documents on flash drives that I keep in my go bag. I keep small bills and pens and batteries as well as my old identification so I have extra copies. Toilet paper, duct tape, um, and I also like to think about things that have multi-purposes in my go bag. So I keep old pillowcases so they can, so they can work as extra bags or I could tear them up and use them as string or for first aid, whatever the case may be. Of course I've got my water and my foods and my snacks. It's really important that my go bag is going to keep me in a good mental state, so having things I like is really important. Of course, I've got my pet taken care of, food, medication, a leash, as well as my N95 mask and some extra changes of clothes. And of course, my first aid kit is very important. Don't forget your hand sanitizer and feminine hygiene products. Yeah, Mary, that's a great point. And I think the last thing I want to point out is I also keep a deck of cards because having something to do and keep myself comfortable and mentally occupied can really help reduce, reduce stress during a disaster. I know comfort's a big deal for the kids. You want to talk a little bit about your kids' go bag? Absolutely. I brought my daughter's go bag. She's 10 years old. Now, the first thing that she has in her go bag she can't live without is her bunny. Now, this bunny I gave to her when she was very young. So anytime she looks at it, she thinks of me and it brings her a lot of comfort. The other thing that she has is a coloring book and coloring pencils. The coloring book will keep her entertained for hours on end. Coloring books keep me entertained too. <laughs> and as always, electronics, you got to have your electronics for those kids that are a little bit older. Lastly, I want to focus on a communication plan. So I have extra copies in the, of the, our communication plan in her backpack so that she has the comfort of knowing where she's going and who to call in an emergency. Yeah, Mary, I think that's a great point. Having a plan is just as important as making sure you have your supplies. So we encourage you all to take your supplies, put them in a bag, and make sure you're checking your go bag regularly. Keep it in a place that's accessible, and during red flag warnings, you can certainly go ahead and move it to your front door. Together, we can have a plan and supplies and all be better prepared for disasters in Marin. Evacuation checklist. It's time to start your plan. Flashlight, ID wallet. Don't forget your phone. Extra battery, gloves, and a meeting zone. Eyeglasses, medicine, and pet supplies. Boots, a hat, long sleeves, and pants, and a cover for your eyes. Evacuation checklist. It's time to start your plan. Map two ways to safety. Practice the roots. Head downhill, stay in the car, evacuation truth. Evacuation checklist, now you know what to do. Evacuation checklist, safety for me and you. My name is Aaron Harris. I am the DIY guy for Fire Safe Marin, and I am here with my friend Kathy to talk about evacuation, warnings, and orders. What is a warning? 
A warning is when you get a text from Alert Moran and it says a wildfire is potentially could threaten your neighborhood. So that's the time when you need to get prepared to go. So there's a few things you can do before you have to leave, which is a order. An order is go. Go. You have no time to do anything but get in your car and get out of Dodge. Go. Order. Go. Will you show me what we do while we are waiting with a warning? I will. Come on, let's go. Let's go. All right, Kathy, you just got a warning from Alert Marin. Your phone is buzzed. You got a text. Um, you know, start to get a little bit of nerves start to flow. What's the first thing you do? Well, I go for my go bag, which lives right here. It has all the essentials in it. Perfect. And then because I'm going to might be a little panicked, I have my extra piece of paper here that reminds me to grab my computer, cell phone, my chargers, and my medicine. All things that don't live in my go bag because I use them every day. I love anything that can try to keep us calm in this emergency situation. What a great idea. I'm, I'm into it. Go ahead. Um, well, it looks like you got some leashes in there. Oh, hi, Nellie. Oh, Nellie. Hi, Nellie. Yeah, hi. Is Nellie ready to go too? Nellie's ready to go too. I have her leashes and I have some food in here and I have some extra dog bags and she's good to go. And you've practiced with Nellie too? Oh, yes. Great. The more practice, the better. Now, if you're on the way out, what? are you going to be wearing? <laughs> I'm gonna be wearing this, this fashionable wildfire wear. I love it, it's cotton, uh, you know, wool is good too. Uh, no plastics, no nylon, nothing to melt. Uh, if it does get hot, you wanna be ready to be protected. Um, you have eye protection, N95, a hat that's gonna keep embers out, and Gloves, gotta have the gloves. If you were to have to move something out of the road, anything was hot, you would wanna protect your hands. I love it. So you're, you've, you've prepared. You've got yep. your car loaded. All yep. this is ready to go. You now can maybe start thinking about fortifying your house. What can you do to make your house safe if embers were to fall upon it? First thing I'm gonna do is close all my windows. Okay. And then I'm gonna go outside and start pulling stuff in that might catch an ember, such as towels and Let, furniture. Let's go cushions. see it. Let's okay. go see it. Let's, let's go. go see it. Kathy, your red. Flag prep, red flag prep is looking radical. Pillows are gone, metal furniture is left, but life happens around here. Talk to me about that towel. Someone was drying their towel. Which happens, so that's why we're taking this perusal around. Also, let's get rid of this plasticky ember catching device and... The recycle bin, you gotta get rid of that. Let's do it. Okay, come on, Nelly. <laughs> All right, Kathy, what's happening out here? Well, I want to make it as easy for firefighters as I can, so I leave some tools out for them. I get it. So you're going to put a hose out. Mm -hmm. uh, so one firefighter could jump off the engine and put, put a fire out. I leave the water on, and that, that has a stop spigot. So there's no leaking. It's not wasting water. It's not affecting the pressure in the neighborhood. What about this ladder? What's this ladder tell a firefighter? tells the firefighter that they can access my roof or take it over to my neighbor and to access their roof. Again, one firefighter with these tools could save any of your houses. These buckets full of water, super portable. They could even take these buckets up on your roof and put fires out. It's good thinking. Now, is this for you? No, 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 I'm, uh, no. <laughs> this is for after you've got the evacuation order, you're gone and you're no peace of mind that your house has tools to protect it. The firefighters can use these tools, not me. I'm not, not you. I'm not touching it. This is, this is, you're gone. Let's I'm gone. Go. Oh, Kathy, you're making good moves here with the silver bullet. It's backed in, nose out, ready to go. If there was traffic. I could just point and go. I don't have to back up into oncoming traffic. And if it was smoky, easy out, easy out. Easy I out. love it. That's a quick fix, especially if there's a warning on. Let's do this. Okay. All right, Kathy, so the evacuation warning, you've done everything you can do in that time, preparing, and then the evacuation switches to an order. What do you do? Well, first of all, I'm on my way out the door. And on my way out the door, I'm gonna to remember to close my windows to keep embers out. <laughs> Turn on my lights so firefighters can see my house. And I'm gonna unlock the door in case I need to get inside my house. I'm gonna open my gate. So they can just get in, lickety-split, if they have to. 
Exactly. Perfect. So Kathy will feel calm in her heart as she leaves that she's done everything she can do to protect her house. She's put the preparation in, she's practiced, and now she's gone. Where are you going? Mildred's? Mildred's. Mildred in? Tennessee. Tennessee. It's a long commute. Tennessee Street. Tennessee Street. Out of the fire area, somewhere safe. She's prepared. That's where she's evacuating to. Thank you so much. You Marin folk, practice, prepare, and when you leave, you can feel like Kathy, that she's done everything she can. Shall we go? Let's go. All right. When it's time to evacuate, it's time to go. Now we're gonna hear from Battalion Chief Todd Melando from the Central Marin Fire Department, who's gonna give us some tips on how to survive while we're evacuating during a wildfire. Let's imagine that a new wildfire has started in your neighborhood. When a fire starts nearby, your first steps are to gather your family and your pets, to dress yourself appropriately for evacuation, to gather your go kit, monitor conditions outside, and wait for the evacuation order that tells you it's time to go. Too often we forget that wildfire evacuations start at your front door. Take a look at the pathway from your front door to your car. Do you have combustibles stored there? Do you need to walk across a wooden deck that might ignite? Are there juniper shrubs lining your front walkway that might ignite from embers? This is part of your home's defensible space and it might be a critical part of your survival during an evacuation. During the campfire in Paradise in 2018, 86 people perished. Of those who died, most died in their front yard or inside their home. They never even started to evacuate. Everyone who got into their car and made it to pavement survived. Take a moment now to look at your defensible space, look at your pathway to your car, and prep your home before a fire starts. It's important to plan your evacuation route in advance before a wildfire starts. Know multiple routes out of your neighborhood. Avoid traveling uphill your goal is to get to the wide roads at the valley floor where you're safest. Keep in mind that there are no magic roads out of your neighborhood. The fastest route out is probably the route that you usually take to the grocery store. During a wildfire, it can be dark as night in the middle of the day when smoke obscures the sun. Be prepared to not recognize important landmarks. You may need to use your navigation system in your car just to find your way out of your own neighborhood. Evacuation means getting yourself from a place of danger to a place of relative safety. It's critical to stay calm. Like so many other emergencies, panic kills. The decisions you'll make while evacuating may mean the difference between life and death. Many residents tell me that they're concerned about traffic they may plan to evacuate by foot or by bicycle. Your car is almost always your best choice for evacuating. A car is made from steel and glass and provides protection from heat and smoke and embers. It's got an AM FM radio to help you communicate and headlights to keep the road illuminated ahead of you. Your car provides a tremendous amount of protection, so much so that firefighters often take refuge inside their vehicles when a fire is passing over. We've all seen the images of cars burned up on the side of the road. Many of us have assumed that those cars burned with people inside of them. The reality is nobody was injured in those cars. They were abandoned and pushed later into burning vegetation to open the roads for emergency responders. Let's consider another scenario. We know that many residents in Marin live at the top of steep hillside neighborhoods served by narrow roads. When you find yourself in this situation, your goal is still the same. Evacuate downhill towards the wide roads at the valley floor. Never evacuate uphill unless there's no other option. And never evacuate by fire road unless you're directed to by law enforcement or the fire department. If you come across an obstruction in the roadway, clear it and then get back into your car. Once vegetation has burned, your path will clear again. Continue heading downhill towards the safety of the valley floor. 
If you live in Marin's wildland urban interface, chances are eventually you'll be confronted with an evacuation. It's critical that you stay calm, stay in your car, and head downhill. And now we have a new segment called Mythbusters. Todd is going to clear up some common misconceptions that we hear all the time from residents of Marin. In 30 years in the fire service, I've heard a lot of myths being passed around, including some about cars and evacuations. Some people have told me that during a wildfire evacuation, they shouldn't take their car because there won't be enough oxygen for the car to run. That's not true. If there's not enough oxygen for your car to run, there's not enough oxygen for you to breathe. I've also heard that cars might explode. Their gas tanks might erupt into flames during a fire if they're exposed to flames. That's not true, that's Hollywood. During an evacuation, you should take your car. It's the safest way for you to get from danger to safety. Last month, we ended the program with some tips on how you can make your home in your neighborhood more fire safe. We also asked if you would please send in some photographs so we can find out exactly what you did. We're very fortunate today to have Donna Miller, a firewise leader in San Anselmo, who sent us a great photo of some fantastic program that they started in her neighborhood. Donna, you wanna tell us a little bit about what this photo is? Uh, yes, it was actually the result of some of my committee members, our Firewise leaders, pitching in to help a neighbor who agreed to have her junipers removed from our street side. Um, it's our one evacuation route, and we knew that if the junipers caught fire at any point, it could create a big wall of flame and possibly slow or block our exit route. So. Um, we were greatly relieved when the, the homeowner agreed to this work, but the, the best thing about what happened here was that um, because of Chipper Day being scheduled, we, our committee started looking into what it would take to clear the junipers, and it ended up being a little bit expensive, so my committee members just jumped in and did the work themselves. I talk about commitment, it was really wonderful. So um, for me, it's just amazing the work that neighbors can do to help neighbors make our community safer and um, you know sometimes it just takes a little bit of guidance or um, a helping hand or sometimes donations to help with this kind of work um, and I do want to say that being a firewise leader has been made so much easier by the partnership we have with FireSafe Marin. Um, the guidance we get is so helpful and so professional. And, you know, I thank you for the past and present members who are really helping us, all of us in Marin, make our community safer. Well, you know, Donna, you're really the local hero, people like you <laughs> doing this kind of work out there. It's just fantastic. It's neighbors helping neighbors. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Make your community safer. Yeah. So thanks so much for coming and telling us your story. Well, thank you, it's Just Rick. fascinating. Well, I think Donna's story should be a motivation for all of us to go out and help prepare our own homes, help prepare our neighborhoods. Please take a photo of the type of work that you're doing because we would love to bring you on to a future segment here. Tonight, we focus on evacuation. As we learned, you need a plan, you need to practice, then you'll be prepared, then you'll be safe. So thank you very much. We'll say goodbye until next time.